Okay, hey, welcome back. I'm here with Todd Pappy. Um, you're a design director yeah. in the uh, Los Angeles office, right? Frankfurt. 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 Oh, yeah. You. Oh, well, I'm, thought... I'm design director for the company, but I'm I'm out of the Frankfurt office. Ah, oh, right. Okay. okay. So, um, actually, what do you do as a design director? Uh, it's it's basically making sure that the design team is following Chris and Tony's and Aaron's vision, uh -huh. and um, so that we're always pushing towards what what they're striving for in S42 as well as Persistent Universe. Uh -huh. So uh, you're uh, co coordinating your team, like uh, like setting the focus on the right things and stuff? Correct, and also reviewing all the documents be because Chris can't review everything. Same with Aaron and Tony, they're way too busy. So I try to review everything. I try to be that gatekeeper. And then once it's to the, to the point that I feel it's, it's good to go, then we pass it on to those guys. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, what's the, the most like challenging recent thing you're working on? The most challenging? Well, I mean, it's basically building out the modular system. How are we going to build a solar system? You know, that, that right now, that's our biggest challenge because what we really need to do is we need to figure out what our formula is. We understand what it is from an arena commander standpoint. We understand what it is from like a, a, an FPS, you know, moment to moment standpoint. But when a player's flying somewhere, Okay, when you start, you know, basically making those quantum travel times very, very long, you know, what's going to break them out? What's going to keep them engaged? That, that, you know, moment to moment feeling when we're actually at a solar system level. That's, uh -huh. that's the biggest thing that we're working out right now. All right, so um, especially that was uh, one of the questions from our viewers on the channel, like, um, Imagining like the the standing system is going to be a really really big really yeah, really good yeah. so uh, like traveling in, in uh, quantum travel from one location to the other might take like minutes or something people were imagining I, that I think it's right now our test was I think 21 minutes from side to side okay so so you will actually have time to get out of your chair like open your movie glass and like read something on the news yeah something. yeah I, I mean if you think of like star wars where they're out out back playing chess or something like that then that's what you can do obviously for a single seater fighter that's gonna be a little bit harder but you know okay wow and um comparing that to the to the to the wormholes or the jump points like uh, will this be like instantaneous travel so you get into a jump point and like get out like in the same second or will it be like quantum travel like uh, i it, it will be more i mean the way that we're thinking about it right now is, is a little bit there's gameplay associated with it there's always some sort of skill so like maybe there's jump point um explorers that are always going there and saying okay this is the safe path to go through there this is what we're thinking from a very high level perspective we haven't started on that yet so um that will be one of those things where we'll we'll try to figure out how how we can modularize it but also switch things so that every time you go through the same jump point it's it's different in some way or another so are there things that are moving hazards that are moving in and out out of the or you know, uh, is it a new path this time? That's that's all stuff that we need to work out still. So there there will be like gameplay involved in, in like yeah. going through the jump points like yeah. Okay. So and uh, another thing we were wondering was um, uh, like the the landing zones. You of course you have like a planet like uh, Delamar or stuff where you can like, just go down and like everywhere you want in this procedural planet thing. But uh, what about a planet like Arcorp or uh, I don't know uh, 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 Terra or something like that where you have like big cities and I I imagine you don't want people like flying it through every building and uh, again. <laughs> Yeah, we don't, but uh, I mean, it, it's, it's something we haven't tackled just yet. Like, part of it is just figuring out, okay, for something like Delamar, like we're going through working out, uh, how can you walk up to it? How can you drive up to it? Um, and then from there, what, it, what happens when we start doing smaller camps? What happens when we do mining? What happens when we start adding all these other kind of gameplay elements onto it? And then once we start tackling our corp, that one scares me. <laughs> to be to be honest, it, it, it does scare me just just because the thought of having a whole planet built as a city. I mean, we'll 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 figure out some way that you won't be able to fly probably everywhere on that one, but we'll we'll figure out something so it's it's not just our core. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've already seen like in the PDU build of uh, 2.5, our corp like already got bigger. Like, you see more buildings in the distance and stuff. So I think that's uh, like working out so far. And so just on a personal note was uh, in the last half year in the development, like the progress is really fast right now is it for our, from our expectations. What was like the most amazing moment like in your last half year at CAG? Um, for me, it's always been the PTU, so, or sorry, the PU, so that one is, every time I see it, and, and once we start dropping things in, um, and that, we're so close right now uh, from a design standpoint, from an art standpoint, to be able to, you know, work out modular systems, so like, for example, a, a truck stop, or uh, a cargo depot, or, or something else, and figuring out the modular system, so that we can actually build these and we can crank them out as, as fast as we possibly can to populate you know, the universe and or in particular that solar system so that that that's where we're starting to figure out everything. Yeah. And so once we get to that point, um, that's that's when I'm I'm gonna be really excited and that's where I, um, basically all of my attention is going towards right now. So Nick Nick is focused on S42, I'm focused on Persistent Universe. Yeah, of course, and there's, uh, um, I just thought of another question we had on our channel very recently, was um, people were wondering, uh, you, you see Port Olisar as a space station, which uh, compared to Grimhex is very clean and very, very organized. And Grimhex on the other hand is like a very rough, tough and, and it, kind of dirty place and people wondering like when you put like thousands of space stations in in these 100 systems that should be there by by the release um, is it is it that a task that you you can imagine be tackable to to do the, all these kind of stations very, very much just because the way that we're building our art our art tile sets so the, the idea would be that if you think of um, uh, Grim Hex, okay, that's low-tech Bravo in, in our terms, that's low-tech Bravo. And then uh, basically we have a low-tech Alpha set, we have a low-tech Charlie set. And then from there we can start switching around these tile sets, adjust the lighting, and from a, from a, s a space station standpoint, it feels different. Um, we can also go through and we can start changing out rooms from a design standpoint so that the layout feels different. But when you start seeing these things combined together, that's when you know you can have your around air around Art Corp. You can have a very very nice space station versus you know out by um, out in one of the Dodger areas or something like that. That's when you have a smaller space station and it's run down and and so that, those are the type of feelings that we want to be able to get. Is it uh, a little bit like um, similar to the style sheets of the D, uh, of the uh, manufacturers from the spaceships? Kind of, kind of. It, it, I, but it's it's more from an art or from an environment art standpoint. So when the designers build, they're building in just basic solids or uh, you know our basic tile set, which is very it's just gray. And then at, at that point. We talk it over with Ian and we say, look, this is the overall feel. This is the idea of the place. And then he starts gathering reference images. And then that's, but that starts very early on in the process when we're actually building Grim Hex um, or any other area. So for, for example, like a, a truck stop, you know, if you're driving around on the Autobahn or something like that, you have some nice ones. Yeah. And then you have some that you're like, mm, I'll, I'll keep on driving kind of thing. <laughs> But I mean, that's what, that to me is what flavors the world. That that's what makes the universe feel unique. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what we were like noticing when uh, we uh, got the first glimpses of Grim Hex was it is very good concealed in in this uh, asteroid belt. Um, belt. It, it's it's hard to find if you don't know where it is exactly. So was it like uh, one point of, of uh, in in part of the design to say, okay, maybe we put. Uh, one or the other stations in the system and let people find them themselves without like uh, being too obvious about it? <clears throat> Very much so. I mean, it, it, again, for us, we want the players to explore. And at that point, if you go through and you, you find something new, a lot of times it just spreads word of mouth, especially with this community because of how tight they are. But in the future, you know, basically Luke and his team on the live 
we like putting in things and we don't tell anybody. And then, and then to me, it's it's that discovery, you know, from a gameplay standpoint, where you're like, oh, I can do this now, or oh, I can go there. Like that's we want the players to experience that. Yeah. And that's just really awesome. So thank you very much for the interview, for your hard work, and I hope to see you on Friday. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.